Hey everybody, this is Pat Torpy from Mr. Big, and you're listening to Music Mania. You're ready for some screaming heavy metal? We rock! But the evil that men do lives on. We gonna bang your You are now listening to the Music Mania Podcast, brought to you by CD Warehouse in Gladstone, the number one hard rock podcast in the Midwest, featuring hard-hitting interviews with rock's living legends. And now, here's your host, Clint Schweitzer. Because one podcast just wasn't enough this week here on Music Mania. I'm your host, Clint Schweitzer. We are double dipping this week. Of course, we had legendary artist Tommy James of Tommy James and the Shondells fame on earlier in the week. And today, I'm bringing you a special interview as I am heading off to Chicago this weekend for the big Scorpions Megadeth Crazy World Tour taking place at the Allstate Arena. Great billing. Excited for this show. Scorpions, one of the best live bands and one of the biggest, you know, international hard rock bands of all time and I'm so excited to see them and prior to that was able to catch up with guitarist Matthias Jobs uh, Matthias Jabs you know kind of in a, to put it in an American way I mean uh, his name is pronounced Matthias Jabs that's how we will refer to it as he is the guitarist for the Scorpions, of course, um, Rudolf Schenker, kind of the rhythm player for the Scorpions. Mat- Matthias handles a lot of the leads and uh, just an unbelievable band, one of my favorite hard rock bands of all time. They've been around forever. Matthias has been in the band since 1978, 39 years. They've been around in various incarnations since really the, the mid to late 60s and on into the 70s. They had a whole other life as a band before breaking it big. They did not play a show until in uh, America, I believe, until 1979. But wow, when they did... They came, you know, albums like Love Drive, Blackout, um, Animal Magnetism, Scorpions, one of, uh, you know, to me, one of the one of the biggest hard rock bands um, really of all time and is certainly internationally uh, a band from Germany and, and, and Matthias is able to, to join us. Uh, they're out on the road right now. They've already played uh, a few shows on this tour with Megadeth. I know they played Reading, Pennsylvania, I believe Madison Square Garden last weekend, and uh, they got a couple days in Canada before hitting that big show in Chicago. So excited to uh, make the trek. Uh, about the seven and a half hour, uh, eight hour drive up there should be fun. Going to be able to, to go backstage, I think, and meet the band but I was able to record this interview beforehand and uh, really meant a lot to me as someone, a lifelong Scorpions fan that was has only been able to see the band once so far, and that was last summer at Rock, Oklahoma. But uh, really excited about this, uh, the billing with Megadeth. Uh, it's, some might say it's a little odd having, a, you know, kind of the one of the kings of, of thrash join the Scorpions, which is more of a, you know, melodic hard rock band, but very excited about that. Matthias, great stories, great uh, stuff from him talking about, you know, the band's latest album, Return to Forever, the reason why they decided not to uh, call it quits after doing kind of what was a farewell tour in 2010. We are able to catch up with him. And so without further ado, we want to go ahead and take you to that interview with Matthias Jabs from the Scorpions. Good morning. Hi. Good morning to you, Matthias. Welcome to the Music Mania Podcast. Uh, this should, if my geography is correct, you should be somewhere in, in Canada this morning. Where, where are you guys at right now? We are in Toronto, Canada. Yes, because you got the big show, of course, uh, Friday night um, in Toronto. I know you've done just a few dates so Hi. far on this North American run so far. How, how's this been going? I know you're out there with Megadeth. The reviews have been great so far. What uh, What's it been like for you guys so far here in North America? Oh, it's been uh, excellent. We uh, had a great start in um, Reading, Pennsylvania, where we uh, sort of had like a production rehearsal for a couple of days and then uh, the, the warm-up show, which was great. And the second show, Madison Square Garden, was really perfect. You know, it's like we were thinking or expecting first, it would be, um, thinking it would be better to have a few more shows uh, to get into it, but it was, everything was like right on and uh, it was a great show. And then we played two nights ago in, uh, in Montreal, here in Canada, and it, it's always great. And I'm, um, you know, looking forward to the shows coming up. Uh, Toronto, as you say, is always perfect, and uh, Chicago, of course. Yes. You know, it's, it's, 
Scorpion's hometown, so to speak. That's where everything started. Absolutely, and we'll see you guys uh, with Megadeth uh, at the Allstate Arena, a great venue uh, here on Saturday night. So uh, you guys got two shows back to back: Toronto and Chicago. That's kind of a long, a long route for you guys. You're gonna have to put that. That's, that's not easy to do those back to back shows. Yeah, I mean, you know, these days we don't like to do the back to backs that much. But uh, I must say, um, you know, it's Friday, Saturday. Those are the best yep. days in the week. And, um, of course, that's when you want to play the big shows. And, uh, you know, the, 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 we, we, we go, uh, travel with buses. So we go overnight, sleep well. And I'm actually looking forward to it. Because if you, for a guitar player, if you play a couple of nights in a row, you are in better form than if you have, a, you know, one or two days off all the time might be good for a singer to uh, recover, but uh, for guitar players, better to play every day. Well, Matthias, you've been in this band for 39 years now, almost 40 years. You joined in 1978, which is unbelievable. Um, and, and the Scorpions had talked about um, going away, doing a farewell tour, calling it quits. But when you see these crowds and you see the reception to what you guys are doing, how grateful are you, how excited are you that you guys have been able to continue this and, and that the band is as beloved as ever? I mean, of course, you know, when we uh, announced the farewell tour in 2010, it was a bit, um, we were serious about it, but it was a bit um, influenced by our ex-manager, who thought it was, a, you know, some kind of like smart uh, green table idea. But um, throughout that tour, we noticed, no, 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 um, you know, the the... We love it too much, the fans love it too much, and, you know, we get offers from promoters now for 2019 so you know everybody wants us still and you know we are selling uh, tons of tickets and we are making new albums and uh, the announcement is more than uh, seven years ago so you know we realized it was way too early and we are having uh, too much fun still and you know this tour is excellent you know so yeah i'm glad he made the right decision and you guys are still so young. I mean, I mean, Rudolph just had a child like a year ago. You guys are you guys are just still too young, right? <laughs> yeah, you're true. I mean, you're right. It's um, it feels uh, like much younger. We're not young anymore, but it feels much <laughs> much younger than we actually are. And uh, you know, we run around like crazy, and uh, I feel like the same like 20 years ago. So, um, and mentally, probably the same like. Uh, 35 years ago. So, That's great. It's funny, and it works, and, you know, we don't look like stupid, so it's okay. <laughs> no, you guys are still on top of your game, which is unbelievable. And I tell you, I want to ask you about uh, the, the 2015 album, Return to Forever. A lot of these songs are still being played in the live set here. Just how important was that album for you guys to come back strong um, and, and to, to really reestablish yourselves? And, and, and a lot of those songs are have become classic Scorpion songs, really. Yeah, I mean, some of the songs we, we uh, play in the live set, which is very good, and um, especially the opening song, uh, you know, an album these days for a rock band from the 80s is, is not the same significance as it used to have, you know, when uh, when we were in the 80s, because the music industry has changed, and it's not like, you know, you get played every day on the radio with the new songs. They play the old songs, of course, but, you know, to have brand new material out on the radio and the video, and it's not so easy. We know this. But what's very important for us is that, you know, we deliver new music to our fans and for ourselves so we can refresh the set list, have a new song, you know, in in the set list and or two or three and uh, just don't play the old material again and again. I mean, to a certain extent, every band has to do that because the people want to hear the hits. So there's half of the set list is already, you know, <laughs> it's a given fact because they just want to hear the hits. So there we are a bit limited. But you know what I mean? If you have something new, it's refreshing for the band members themselves. That's very true. And I mean, Scorpions have been around for so long that there's so many songs and albums to draw from. You've been in the band since 1978 for 39 years. It's unbelievable. Uh, and talk about that. Talk about playing with a guy like Rudolf Schenker for uh, for 39 years. You've uh, you you two and you're sh uh, sharing your guitar duties. Uh, Rudolf has always said. He, he's he's more of the rhythm guy. He loves the rhythm parts. He's more of a rhythm guy. And, and that uh, you kind of shine in this band. Talk about what it's like playing with Rudolph for all these years. It's got to be quite a trip. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, we are, um, we fit very well together. 
um, you know, we get along great as guys, and we are guitar playing wise very different from each other. As you mentioned, you know, he's uh, he plays like lead once in a while in a, a rather slow song, but um, you know, he is mainly uh, he focused on the rhythms, and uh, I play the rest, so to speak, and. Um, that is uh, works very well because we're not fighting for anything. You know, everybody knows this guy is better at that, and this guy is better at that, and then we get along great. And uh, he was a great composer. You know, he wrote most of our material throughout the years, and uh, so it all works out great. And uh, you know, there's a very good feeling in the band these days. And even with the new drummer, Mickey Dean, you know, he fit right in. No, it's a shame that we, you know, had to let James go, but he really had a health problem. Yeah. You know, he continue at this point. And, uh, but now with Mickey, it's like, you know, he's a powerhouse, but he's also a very funny guy. And he fits right in. We knew each other from before, but now, since we are traveling together and everything is much closer, it's really, it was the best choice. It was. Mickey fits in great. I was able to see one of his first shows when you guys played at Rocklahoma last summer. Great to see him in the band. I love Motorhead. I love what he did with Lemmy, and he fits in great. And i got to ask you about singer Klaus Mine. Klaus is, to me, one of the great singers in rock history. The fact that at his age, his voice still has so much power and that he's still such in such command speaks so volumes about him and his work ethic. Just talk about Klaus and, and how he's been able to keep this up and sound so good all these years. I mean, he has to really uh, take very good care of his voice, but he he knows, he learned it throughout the years, uh, especially after he lost his voice in the early 80s, before we recorded the album Blackout, you know, he had to, like, really take a break of six months almost, and uh, meanwhile, he learned how to treat his voice on the road, you know, don't overdo it. And uh, warm up well, you know, he t- spends a lot of time warming up. He's like a, got a vocal cord, uh, the massaging machine and, and all kinds of things and uh, in order to keep in great shape. And he's, I mean, the guy turns 70 next year and he sings fantastic. And, uh, you know, he's always like very, uh, he's always on and, uh, you know, that's just great for us. And, um, you know, he uh, he needs to, Take good care of himself, though. It's not like you can, uh, you know, uh, party hard and uh, stay up too long. And, you know, those things have changed a bit, of course. But the most important thing on tour is anyway to deliver a great show to the fans. And, uh, you know, I always say uh, for us it's show number 135, maybe. And for the fans it's show number one. So you've got to be there for them 100%. Well, before I let you go, Matias, and you've been so gracious with your time, i got to kind of ask you about this, because to me, the Scorpions have always been such an international band, a band that can go anywhere and you command a following. You have respect everywhere around the world. And to me, I think that's because your songs and, um, are so far-reaching, and they're, and a lot of them are, are, the, are so positive, lyrics of hope. Th- song like Wind of Change can be sang everywhere in the world, and it has the same message. I mean, do you think that's why the Scorpions have such an international appeal, appeal because your songs have just such an a positive uh, approach to everything? Um, to a certain extent, yes. But um, I've been wondering myself sometimes. I remember <laughs> when we were back in uh, 1982, we played in Japan. And we were, you know, we were doing the Black Hole Tour worldwide. You know, we were in the States for six months. We were in Europe for three and a half months. We were uh, in Asia. And coming back from Japan, we had an offer on the way home to play Thailand, Bangkok, Thailand, for the first time in our history, and uh, and, so, and two shows too, like you know, a big building, twelve thousand people each night, and we said yes, okay, why not? Let's do it. It's sort of on the way home, and it was supposed to be the last shows on the tour, and I mean, they, they came people, and Bangkok was quite different to what it is now. Now it's a big, you know, world capital, but back then it was a bit jungly. And in 1982, and but you know, where do these people come from? How do they know about us today? Everybody knows everything because of the internet. In those days before uh, this, the the time, uh, how do they know? How do they know our music? And uh, and everybody sang along, and it was like 12,000 people every night. So uh, we discovered early that we have a worldwide following. Um, no matter, you know, if we sing about hope or not, but you're right, we always had, like, 
kind of positive lyrics. But with uh, uh, songs like Wind of Change, of course, we reached a whole new a new audience. And uh, these days, uh, you know, maybe we need another change, but <laughs> <laughs> that's why we call the, the tour the Crazy World Tour, because the world is, is crazy at the moment. That is very true, and uh, that's great to have a band like the Scorpions that make it a little a little less crazy, so to speak. And Matthias, thank you so much for your time. I know you guys um, have a show here coming up on Friday night, and you'll be uh, Saturday night. We will see you in Chicago. I can't wait to see the band again. You're always uh, you know, one of my favorites of all time, Matthias. Thank you so much, and we'll we'll catch up soon. Good luck the rest of the way, and uh, hope all is well, my man. We'll catch up soon. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you. You bet, Matthias. Thanks so much. A true pleasure it was, and. Um, I tell you, that meant a lot to me. Uh, lifelong Scorpions fan, Matthias, has always been, you know, he along with Rudolf, Sh- Rudolf Schenker, what a guitar duo they've, they've been. The, the, the strength and the playing. Um, Matthias really handles a lot of the lead parts. Rudolf will here and there. Rudolph's more of a, of a rhythm player and a power player. He certainly is. But Matthias, to me, you know, one of the backbones uh, of the Scorpions, and it's great to see them still out there doing this. I caught their live show about a year ago. They're still on top of their game. They're in great shape for their age. I mean, you, he, you heard Matthias talk about uh, Rudolph and, and uh, Klaus Mein, the singer. They're literally going to be 70 years old coming up here in the next year. I mean, they're, it's unbelievable. And um, guys, we just thank you so much for listening. Thank you for so much for checking us out, uh, for subscribing, for downloading everything that you do to, to keep us going. Uh, we appreciate you hitting that subscribe button on iTunes and YouTube and sending us that feedback, uh, music mania underscore show on Twitter. We appreciate all of it. It means the world to me. It's why I do this. So I can interact with other rock fans. And that's really what it's about for me because that's what I am uh, a huge fan. going to be bringing a full review back with me from Chicago, heading up there, um, to, Hang out and uh, first chance uh, for me to be able to meet the Scorpions. Going to be heading backstage, uh, courtesy of of their publicity, which has been amazing, and and what they've been able to do for us to to get these interviews for you guys. Uh, Best bet promotions, thanks to them. Guys, thank you so much for joining me here on the Music Media Podcast. We'll be back once again next week with autograph singer Simon Daniels. Until then, I'm here to rock you like a hurricane, and I will be back next week with a brand new show.